Hello and welcome to this session. We have this small but extremely important topic called as heteroscedasticity. We will deal with this now in looking into ways of identifying heteroscedasticity in the data and the various techniques on how to counter this. So that would be a prime focus in this session. What is heteroscedasticity? We have an assumption in a linear regression and there is a small abbreviation called as line. L stands for linear. I stands for independent. N stands for normality. And E stands for equal variance. And your heteroscedasticity is related to this E. Whenever you have errors, and you all know what errors or residuals mean, right? You all know what errors or residuals mean. And we have an assumption around errors, which says that all the errors should have the same variance. All the errors should have the same variance. And this is called as constant variance assumption. We have various other names associated with this constant variance assumption. And the other names are homogeneity or homoscedasticity. If there is no equal variance in the errors, which is represented using epsilon, then this problem is called as heteroscedasticity. Right, and if the errors are not independent, it's called as autocorrelation problem. And another assumption is around the predictor variables axis. If they are assumed to be linearly independent of each other, then it's fine. If the variables, predictor variables, are not linearly independent of each other. You call it as collinearity problem. Okay. So with that assumption, let us get started or let us continue with this. Right. What are the various sources of heteroscedasticity? Why does heteroscedasticity exist in the first place? Error variance, that is variance in the error changes with values of x that is heteroscedasticity we want what equal variance we don't want the variance to change as and how your input values change we do not want to see that kind of a data right what happens if you have that kind of a data right when you do not have constant variance over all the observations input values, it is called as heteroscedasticity. But what would happen if there is heteroscedasticity in the data? Remember OLS? What is OLS? What does OLS stand for? Anyone? Ordinary least square. What is ordinary least square? If I draw X and Y axis, if I draw a fitted line there, and if these are all my data points, I calculate the distance between the data point or the actual values to the predicted value. It has to be less, right? The distance between the data points or the actual value to the prediction line should be small. That is called as 
ordinary least square value, least square. I want the least distance there, right? If at all you have heteroscedasticity, and if you apply OLS on top of that, it will result in estimated coefficients, that is beta naught, beta one, beta two, so on and so forth. It is going to result in these estimated coefficients, which are going to lack precision. So what happens is your estimated standard errors, you'll have the standard error, right? For all these regression coefficients. All these standard errors of your regression coefficients are often understated. So you'll get low standard error values, estimated standard error values. The moment you see less error, standard error, you feel that the model is good. In reality, that is a false sense of accuracy. It's giving you wrong information. Hence, we want to get rid of heteroscedasticity problem. You know, these are the various reasons why your heteroscedasticity might exist, right? Error learning models. As the number of hours put in typing, practice increases, right? Uh, you, you might have seen that typing writer, learning type, and all that was fashionable while um, I was in my engineering, probably in 2001, 2002 time, right? So as in how the hours that you spend practicing your typing as in how your number of hours increase the number of errors also come down as well as the variance decreases earlier probably you have taken one hour to type one page document now you are taking only two minutes right and from now on or as in how your experience increases how many of the documents I give you, more or less you're going to take the same time. So the variance also decreases and your errors also reduce. Okay, look at yet another example. As income increases, savings not only increase, but the variability in savings also increase. Because people have more choice with their income than to just save, right? Probably if you're going to earn more, you're going to go on a world tour, or you're going to purchase luxury goods, a nice big villa or whatever be it, right? So your as your income increase, your savings not only increases, but the variability also increases. So these are two obvious reasons why heteroscedasticity might exist. These are just examples. Now, variance in your error or epsilon changes with values of x due to a secondary issue also. What are the secondary issues? Omitted variable. What if you omit or do not include a relevant input variable, right? If you do not include that, you'll have an error component, right? What is this error component in this equation? Beta naught plus beta one x one plus beta two x two, so on and so forth, plus epsilon, right? This is your error component. This error component includes multiple things. First of all, your prediction will not be exactly equal to your actual value. Say I'm predicting that the sales for the next month would be $1 million. I'm predicting this, that the sales for the next month would be $1 million. After one month, if I look into my actual sales figure, Will it be exactly equal to $1 million? What do you guys think?
mostly no, right? And we know that probability associated with a single value is always zero, right? So you will not always be on target. If you're saying $1 million will be my sales in the next quarter or next month, it's not going to be the same if, you, if I were to wait for one month and look at the actual value. That component is called as error. And there could be multiple reasons, right? Probably you should have included X3, X4, multiple other input values also, regressors. But you have not included that probably because data collection was very difficult for X3 and X4, or probably I forgot to collect the data. Hey, sorry, I think there was a glitch, right? Sorry about that. So I was saying that if you do not include few of the important input variables in your equation, then also there might be an error. Maybe you failed to include or you forgot to include or you felt that the data collection for X3 and X4 is extremely difficult, hence you, are, you did not include that. Maybe, right? That component is called as the error component. So if you're going to emit any of the variable, your error part is going to get impacted. That there's an example given. Skewness in distribution. Distribution of income and education. Bulk of in, uh, income and wealth concentrated in the hands of a few, right? So if you look into the entire world's population, you will see that a lot of people would fall towards your below poverty line, right? There'll be very few people who actually have a lot of income. And people say that the 20% of the people in the globe who earn 80% of the income, right? So this is how it would be. Probably if you say that x-axis is my income, then you'll see that oh, Sorry It'll be in this way Right Majority of the people will earn this High salaries one crore two crore and above things like that. There will be very few people There'll be less people right hence It is called as skewed. It will be skewed even if you look into the education system, it remains the same. For people who are very poor below the poverty line, they'll be less educated in comparison to people who have, uh, who are from the developed countries and things like that. Incorrect data transformation, incorrect functional form specification, right? So all these are the reasons for heteroscedasticity. For example, you should have actually gone out with the log transformation However, you have gone out with the reciprocal. Or probably you have gone out with the square transformation, square of the variable. Right, so incorrect or inappropriate transformation of the data can also result into heteroscedasticity. And what is heteroscedasticity? I once again uh, repeat, unequal variance. So assumption for linear regression is that your errors should have equal variance. If you have unequal variance, then probably it's not a good fit. Or the coefficient values which you get might lack the precision. Okay, so there are a lot of techniques to identify and there are a lot of graphical techniques, importantly, right, to identify heteroscedasticity. Uh, you can use a graphical plot such as scatter plot. You can use a scatter plot of your standardized residual against the fitted value. What do you mean by standardized residual? Can someone say yesterday I've just spent brief time on that. I've explained about uh, residual, standardized residual and studentized residual. However, I just want information from you on what is standardized residual? Anyone? Hmm. 
don't say that you haven't found time to look into that what is that okay let me check normal residual or the raw residual divided by standard deviation absolutely right Vijay I appreciate your understanding it's sorry it's normal residual whatever residual you calculate of the error value divided by your standard deviation there you get the standardized residual right so if you plot standardized residual against your fitted value or your predicted value it will help you identify whether there are signs of heteroscedasticity in the data or not right so these are all informal methods let us first complete this you can plot scatter on y and x you can plot squared residual against each input variable and check whether there is any pattern in the data if there is a pattern that means your errors are not constant for multiple regression case you can plot squared residuals against each of your input values you can also plot squared residuals against the predicted value or your uh, fitted values fitted values or predicted values mean the same Okay, so let me show you this. Can someone say whether there's any pattern here? We have plotted fitted values. What are fitted values? Y values versus your residuals. Do you see that there is any pattern there? No, there's no pattern in the first graph, right? You're right, Ramana, on that. Do you see any pattern here? Yeah, as and how your x-axis values, whatever B increases, your errors are also increasing. That is obvious here. And this takes the shape of a funnel. If you think about this as a funnel, right? It takes the shape of a funnel. Either your residuals tend to fan out in this way, or your residuals might also have another pattern this way. That means residuals close in. Residuals close in as in how your x value increases is this clear on how to detect heteroscedasticity using scatter plots and why is it important okay okay so, but how do I get rid of that? And why is it important? I've already told you, right, that the standard error that gets calculated would give you a wrong indication. It, your, your standard error might say that, hey, the error is less. So you might go with the assumption that if the error is less, that means you're doing a good job with respect to your model. But that is not the case. Your model or your equation might not be good, right? Your coefficients your or your estimated parameters might show a different value altogether. And you might get into the assumption that your model is good. So that is the reason why you need to check for heteroscedasticity and inferences based on OLS becomes incorrect. Ordinary least square value. Okay. 
there is a way to get rid of this and that is called as transformation and there are multiple uh, techniques available here for transformation when you see that the relationship between the mean and the variance is known to you the relationship between mean and variance is known to you you can apply appropriate transformation okay and this transformation will um, ensure that the variance of the error almost becomes constant right and it also stabilizes your variance that is what it means and any transformation for that case is going to help you deal with two uh, objectives it will help you satisfy two objectives first thing is it will help you obviously um, ensure that the variance does not have any pattern and the second thing is it will also normalize your data so there are dual advantages of transforming the data points right it will normalize your variable and also it will make the variance independent of the mean so your variance will not get impacted by your uh, or as and how your x value increases or as and how your y value increases your residuals do not take the pattern of a funnel okay so there are multiple ways of transforming if the data follows Poisson regression or Poisson distribution you take the square root of y or you take the square root of y plus square root of y plus one so these are multiple ways of transforming the data. You can take the logarithm, exponential, square of the variables or reciprocal of the variables, multiple ways of transforming, right? And if there is binomial data, then you'll use, hope you have uh, learned about this during your trigonometric days, right? Sine inverse of root y. Okay, then in this way if you have negative binomial distribution you take a different parameter once again it's lambda inverse and sine h inverse and then it's lambda into square root of y not required you need not remember all these things i've just given you for your reference that's it okay so if you look at the scatter plot of the squared residuals against x here you can think about this right residuals against uh, squared residual against y sorry you decide on the appropriate transformation of x and if you see that kind of a pattern wherein the data is increasing in this way you can divide both sides by your x value right so this might make few changes but did it actually make a change or not? For that, you look into your scatter plot. Where did it go? It's not there. But if you look into the scatter plot after doing this transformation, you'll see that the data would look like that instead of looking like a funnel. Are other transformations possible other than your divide by x? Obviously, there are multiple ways of transforming. You can probably plot squared residuals against x um, if it's showing a linear shape as opposed to quadratic shape right sorry if you do any other transformation that is what would happen you can also take square root transformation it's going to divide both sides by the square root of x not just by x but by square root of x you can take log transformation it's going to compress the scales it's going to take log of values why am i saying compresses the scale look into log of say 800 it will give you a value which is very small right so let us check that so if you have higher values right and if you sorry i was just building a cmmi model there um, 
here let me clear that if you take log of 800 for example you'll get 6.68 so 800 value got compressed to 6.68 all right ramana not a problem that is what this third point sees what if by looking at the graph you could, could not identify an obvious transformation or what if the transformation doesn't work at all is there any other way to deal with the heteroscedasticity problem oh yes absolutely there are other ways of dealing with heteroscedasticity problems okay and that is nothing but instead of using your OLS ordinary least square value you can actually proceed and look into your weighted least squares there is something called as weighted least square so what was the thing that we have discussed we have discussed here that if there is heteroscedasticity in the data your coefficient estimates which get calculated based on your OLS estimation would be wrong would give you a wrong indication hence instead of going with OLS I'll go with a different technique which is called as WLS weighted least square it's the same thing but only a few things change here and there um, so let me tell you here that in OLS you're going to minimize this function summation of y i minus beta naught minus beta 1 x 1 whole square yeah you will try to i sorry x i this is beta naught okay so you try to minimize this however when it comes to weighted weighted least square all you do is you add 1 by x i square here that's it this is doing some changes so in your weighted least square parameter estimates that is beta naught beta 1 are obtained by minimizing your weighted sum of square so if you do not understand the technical uh, explanation don't worry WLS is weighted least squares, which is used instead of OLS. Right, because WLS doesn't have the same kind of ne negative impact which OLS has if your data has heteroscedasticity in that. Mm. Okay, or there's something called as generalized least squares, which is that. So you vary the weights assigned to various observations, basically, in OLS, uh, GLS. So, okay, so just remember that if whether there is heteroscedasticity or not, you try to identify by plotting residual values. Here it is, squared residuals and each input or you will plot residual uh, squared residuals against each independent variable if you have multiple inputs right you plot it against x1 x2 x3 so on and so forth or what you can do is you can uh, look into squared residuals and you can plot it against y values once you plot, if you see this kind of a data, you transform the data. If you see that kind of a data, you take divided by x. Or are there other ways of transforming the data? Yes, you can look into square root transformation, logarithmic transformation, and all that. What if, despite doing these transformations, things do not work out? Your errors do not have a constant variance, for example. Then instead of uh, going with OLS, you go with WLS weighted least square or generalized least square to identify your parameters beta naught beta one and things like that right so there is a lot of explanation around whether you have to go with 
um, log transformation or power transformation and things like that. So better to know that um, before jumping in with some kind of transformation. Okay, so that's it from heteroscedasticity perspective. 